Welcome to the Dolomites. I am here for the next eight nights or so. I'm actually here with my wife, who at the moment is back rest, having some rest back at the place we're staying as we had a long drive yesterday and I didn't want to get her up first thing in the morning. So uh, I'm here in uh, Santa Maddalena, as you can see behind me. It's just like one of the most famous views of the Dolomites. Obviously, there's a few others which we will be going to. What am I doing here, apart from doing my usual job? Well, I'm working on a recce for a photography workshop next October, early November next year, 2018. So I'm seeing everything that I can. Um, I've been here before, but I want to see it in autumn when I'm planning on being here with actually, and hopefully another photographer, and um, just to see where all the viewpoints are that I know of, see what they look like in autumn, get them in the best light, so that you can see what it would look like if you were to come on a workshop here next autumn in the Dolomites. It's the end of day one on our little trip to the Dolomites. So this morning you saw me in the Val de Funès. I've come back here. My wife is helping, with, helping me with the camera work, which is great and making faces, trying to make me laugh. But if she pans the camera around, you can see we found a slightly different view of the Val de Funès than what we had this morning. So we've already had the fantastic afternoon light, which has been lighting up the valley that was about two hours ago. We've come up here just to try and find an alternative, just because people obviously will always do the easy point of view, which is just from the road down there. And uh, so that's been done, as I said. So what we're, going to, we're trying to do is find something alternative to give people a bit of variety of the view rather than just the same old, same old. So along here, there's this view, just further along the track. There's like a nice wooden fence that goes down and gives you another sort of view. So that's the Valle Funes. So we've done what we can here. There's also San Johan, which is just over there. I got something this morning. It's okay. Um, so, no, don't worry. It's okay. So, uh, tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Valle di Gardena. So, uh, Valle di Gardena is just over to camera right. So, where my wife is panning around now, you'll see uh, the odd lay over there. And it's the other side of that. Is the Valle di Gardena, so we're going to go over there. Someone this morning has already told me that the valley over there is a lot more colourful than it is here. So we will see tomorrow. So that'll be coming up in part two. This morning I'm back in Santa Maddalena here up in the Dolomites and you can probably see behind me why I've come back this morning. It is stunning. There is absolutely no other word for that view behind me. With a cloud up there that's just turning pink, red, whatever other shade of red and orange is just fantastic. So I'm getting some shots. I'm also doing a little bit of a time lapse as well just to Put a bit more into this video so i haven't done any time lapse for a while but uh, with the color that's going on up there i really wanted to do something so uh, just enjoy this view and you can see why it is that as landscape and travel photographers we keep going back and back and to views just to try and get the absolute perfect shot that we can it is stunning behind there It's around midday and we've come up to Paso Gardena, as you can see there. Absolutely amazing view down there. This is a bit of a recce today just to see what this view is going to give, maybe for dawn. I might come up here at dawn one day just to see what's going to go on. But I've uh, been doing a panorama. It's very tricky though because there's a lot of wind up at this height, so we'll have to see how it comes out. But it's uh, another indication of what's going to be happening on a, a future workshop here in the Dolomites. We 
we come up to what is probably nearly the top of the Dolomites. It's about 3,000 meters up here, up on the Sella Pass. And uh, as you can see around there, if my wife just pans the camera around, probably stunning doesn't do it justice. It is just fantastic up here. I think every th superlative that you could think of for mountain scenery would probably encapsulate it up here. So we've come up here just to see what, what it would be like. We were a bit afraid of what it would be like as down actually on the pass itself it's quite windy but up here there's not a lot of wind at the moment which is great but we also have this green behind us which is protecting us so we're just seeing uh, if it's going to work out if it is a possible destination to come for a workshop or not but so far it looks cool. So we swapped mountain vistas for this little intimate waterfall here in the Dolomites. It's, uh, it's clouded over just a little bit, so there's something I found doing a little bit of research on the internet. And it's uh, not far from uh, one of the little villages here in the Dolomites. As you can see, I've got my camera set up there. And as per my, uh, the seascapes that I was doing in Ireland in Donegal, I don't want the shutter speed too quick. So it's on about an eighth of a second at the moment. But I need to show the power of the waterfall, but also I need to show the flow of the waterfall. So as you can hear, it's quite powerful at the moment. We've experienced snow already today when we were up on the mountain top. We were at about 3,000 meters or so up there. So you know, it's pretty cold, very, very windy, but here we're protected. So waterfalls like this are perfect, wet weather, dull days. So that's why I came here just to see if it works, if it's a good spot to come to, to bring people to see if they will be interested in this kind of thing. And I think there's enough here, there's enough space for enough people. There's this waterfall here, and also the other side of the bridge over there is uh, a little bit, little bit more of a waterfall, but this is probably the better of the two waterfalls that we've got here in the Dolomites. The end of day two in the Dolomites, it's been a it's been a good day. The start of the day was amazing. The end of the day, just missed it. Very unfortunate. I was looking for somewhere to do sunset. I wanted all the rolling mountains and layered going back towards, uh, as you can see, the sunset behind me. I just missed it. Just trying to find somewhere with some elevation and I've had to come to a, actually a ski slope to get the elevation that I needed to get the sunset. But unfortunately, working out the exact spot where I needed to go took so much time that I missed the best light of the end of the day which is really frustrating as it was absolutely superb on the drive up here. What do you do? Well actually tomorrow I plan to go somewhere down in the valley but what I've seen uh, that's actually what delayed me. Um, I'm going to come back here tomorrow night and get the sunset proper and hopefully there's the same kind of cloud as well. We shall see it's supposed to be a bit clearer tomorrow but uh, that's the end of day two and in the Dolomites, I'll just leave you with the sunset. This morning we got up early to go to Lago di Carezza, which is just below the mountain range you can see behind me, which is Latima. It was okay, there wasn't really much to see there this morning, it was quite clear sky and uh, it was a little frustrating because we couldn't get down to the actual lake itself as it's uh, not really allowed. So we came away disappointed and I got talking to a local this morning who said to me if we come up a certain path we can get a view of the mountain range itself, Latima, um, from the path that we're on. So the only thing that I'm thinking of is if, if I was to bring people here with the other photographer that I'm talking to, it's uh, probably about a 20 minute walk to where we are, plus there's a tiny bit of a climb of about 30 seconds to go up uh, a bit of a wire. It is possible, but it's actually, as you can see here, quite a small area, but the view of Latimer itself is actually very nice. At around half past nine or so, or so the sun, which is over there to my right, uh, clears the ridge line and then is just illuminating everywhere and illuminating all the golden colors in the trees. So. 
So as a view, as it goes, it's really great bringing people here. Not sure, but uh, in any case, just enjoy the view that's behind me of Latimer. Good afternoon and welcome to Dolomites TV. We've been doing a little bit of research in the area just to see what it is we could find as around the area of Lago de Caret. It's actually quite difficult to find sort of different viewpoints of the Dolomites. So a little trip down to the tourist information and they gave us a path to come up. And behind me you can see a really nice beautiful mountain plateau. The mountain range that's behind me is the Rosengarten which at sunset lights up red. So this walk took maybe half an hour or so, so I'm thinking that uh, if I propose this to the other photographer, it shouldn't be too bad. People should be able to manage it to get up here. And there's a huge panorama all across here, the mountains, and, and of course you have the rose garden there behind you, the Rosengarten. So uh, is it a possibility to bring people up here? I would have thought so. I can't see any problems with people walking up here. It's maybe a little bit of a huff and puff for some people but outside of that enjoy the view of the Rosengarten here in the Dolomites. It's around five o'clock in the evening and we've reached our final destination, the Alpi di Siusi, Europe's highest mountain plateau. You can see the, the mountain range behind me, Sassalungo looks stunning with the side light, the evening side light coming across. Each time that I've come here, I've always just missed the best of the side lights on the foreground, but this evening we've got here a good hour and a half before sunset, so I've been able to get the setting sun on the foreground and all the huts, the mountain huts behind me, they're, they're raking very long shadows, which looks absolutely gorgeous in this low evening autumn sun. What else can I say? Another destination that's on the list to bring people to on a future workshop. So just enjoy the view that's there behind me. This morning I've come up to the Paso Gardena and uh, well, it, I'm not right there at the moment, I'm actually on Paso Sala at the moment, but at Paso Gardena this morning it was a little frustrating because there was quite a lot of cloud over the, the mountains in the back and uh, I did wonder whether I was facing east, I was actually facing east, but uh, there was no real sunrise at all to speak of, which was a shame, so I quickly came up the Paso Sala and I uh, got a couple of nice shots, but it's very, very windy up here at the moment. Just trying to stand up, just trying to do anything is nigh on impossible. The wind speed up here, the wind chill is pretty frantic up here at the moment. So uh, I've got a shot behind me of the, uh, the, I think it's the Salad Towers, which are just over my left shoulder. And that looks quite nice because the, the sun is over my right shoulder and it's shining directly onto the mountain up there. So it looks quite nice because uh, the top of the mountain looks quite dark and forbidding. But um, for the moment, that's pretty much the end of the first part of our trip to the Dolomites. The second part um, is coming up very soon because we're off to around the Cortina area today. So we're going to be doing lots of stuff around there. Um, so a lot more rugged and mountainous area around that particular part of the Dolomites. So until then, thanks again for subscribing. Thanks for all of those that have sub subscribed in the last week or so. And uh, there's lots more to come, promise you that. Hope you've enjoyed this first part of the Dolomites and uh, see you again very, very soon.